you have adequate savings you have money in the bank but if something happens to you nobody is able to access your bank account I haven't come to that one particular issue. What Mr. Rungta also mentioned about um, adult guardianship—that's yeah, that's a very also, important thing because we should talk about. Because at the end of the day, uh, there are personal experiences and and you know what friends and some people colleagues have mentioned. Um, an elderly person who is uh, progressively unable to understand things and uh, because of uh, because of age-related issues. small thing like signing i mean your signature will change you may not be able to if you take come on a video you know my mother had this thing about she had to validate that she was alive for a life certificate now she for a, for a little time she had this the, her head would shake now you try to video record a shaking head it will not accept it so you know my son then held her back at the back you know she held her neck and then he took it now why do you have to do all this it's it's really not required it's her wealth it's her money it's it's her uh, hard earned uh, savings you know so i think an adult guardianship uh, or an uh, uh, i mean there has to be a different approach towards how senior citizens and their wealth and how they handle the management of that wealth uh, needs to be looked at needs to be looked at very differently uh, than an ordinary person because there's a lot of things to be done on that so our finding and the reason why we included this in the study almost towards the end was this that a lot of people i'm sure it applies to most people in this room that you have adequate savings you have money in the bank but if something happens to you nobody is able to access your bank account so you may have some cash lying at home once you run out of that to even keep you in hospital or if you need day care in spite of the fact that you have an asset you're probably living in a three bedroom house in a prominent part of bombay you have maybe over a crore of rupees in various entities but because nobody can access it now if you have children they have to go to court get an order i believe courts are quite receptive about it but only siblings parents if there is a problem with a child it usually doesn't happen because the parents have the money only siblings and children have been able to go to court and get an order to access in a limited way with regular reporting to an authority that they are using the money for what it's supposed to be to look after the incapacitated person now i was surprised that when we mentioned this even the people that we talked to in the legal circles had no idea that not everybody is willing to take care of people either you do jugad where you are able to access money and you also use it for other things but if you have a third party suppose you have no child then that third party needs to be paid he needs to be able to have the money to take care of you go to court do the reporting do the accounts everything is rupees and paisa at the end of the day hiring people the help doesn't come you have to keep changing them it's a lot of time and energy and there is zero thought to this at all we are a country which is aging rapidly we have nuclear families there are lots of people who are coming and saying that you know our children are abroad i'm living alone and every day i'm worried what will happen to me if say i fall by the road side nobody recognizes me or something happens to me neighbors will come for a few days after a while they say we can't access his bank account who's going to go to court on his behalf now the rest of the world the state is very clear that they have a responsibility towards that person in india you may have paid taxes at 40% but we have no concept of social security we have no concept of the state being responsible for you and acting on your behalf which is one of the reasons why when we put out this today's event i had requested people like selesh mishra and nasreen wisdom from that please come and listen to this because ultimately the legal advice that we had was you will need a separate legislation for this because it has not been thought about at all so i going to hand it to mr rukta because i'm sure he knows a lot of examples of jugad that take care of this but that's not the answer you need to have the state thinking about it and providing legal structures for it so i, I mean i have had unfortunate uh, personal experience about it i mean uh, my father had a stroke and uh, he sort of uh, got bedridden uh, also uh, his cognizance was affected uh, excellent record keeper so everything was in order taking over was no issue at all 
Okay. Everything was there, but everything was in a single name. Everything was in a single name. So we did Jugaad. I mean, we looked at guardianships and things like that. At that time, I was not that clued on. In fact, that unfortunate incident made me clued on. So for our clients now, we have power of attorneys, but unlikely they will work if you actually, they're not lasting powers of attorney. So you would need change in law that will allow those power of attorneys to continue despite the, uh, you know, inability or the non-contractual ability. Again, all credit to SEBI. And I think because Pramod Rao uh, is sitting there, you have to give him uh, this credit that in the consultation paper, they have spoken about it. Again, it is one regulator which has spoken about it. There are no solutions. It is a complex problem because it is very open to misuse. Okay. All the Jugaad is open to misuse. Any <coughs> this guardianship that we will do is also open to misuse. Uh, and therefore, there needs to be checks and balances. Checks and balances for the people who are, you know, my, who have a clear mind, a clear conscience. For them, those checks and balances are annoyances. But those need to be kept there. So it is a complex issue. I think we need to talk about it. And again, all credit to SEBI that they have opened that dialogue. And hopefully, uh, you know, the other regulators will take it up. Again, there, if you see, RBI has a standard system and it is working. Uh, the pension, because a lot of government pension comes there. And a lot of pensioners have this problem. So they have worked out a system. In fact, we used part of that system where the officer comes home, it is, you know, signed in front of him. So I think they have a system. It needs to be codified so that it can really be something that is available. Um, just to add to that, I think it's also the societal structure. Like Sujata correctly mentioned, we are now in a nuclear family era. So we don't have the support of a joint family. On the other hand, um, transmission of wealth is happening after death not before that. So earlier it would be the, you know, uh, the head of the family would then nominate or decide that so and so would now take my place, he would retire, you know, one was phase kind of thing. And then that person or those persons will start running with it. We don't have that luxury now because old age needs financing. Old age needs to be funded. So if you have earned X amount of money, one third of X needs to be kept for you to take care of your old age. So you can't give that capital for somebody else to manage and maybe they were not they are not there to manage in the first place so uh, that 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 complexity comes in because of that issue that's my reading of it now what probably can be done is something like nomination you know you give a, a facility for leaving instructions maybe maybe you know, i'm just thinking out here <laughs> that you know maybe in a in, in a dmat account or in a trading account or maybe in a bank account you leave instructions as you would leave a nomination that in case i am incapacitated and uh, somebody is able to certify my incapa incapacitation, then so and so should be uh, allowed to operate the account for this purpose. Maybe that sort of thing can can help out. I think that will require a lot of checks and balances. Yes. So uh, the Kerala High Court has put a list which we have talked about in this. What kind of checks and balances, even when it's a sibling? So maybe some of that will have to be incorporated if this has to work. But like I said, it's a separate and long discussion for a new statute. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, but this is something that is going to be center stage as we go along. It's, it's adult guardianship or what happens. It is a nuclear family and this tendency for people who are today young uh, not to have children. I think very quickly is going to, uh, maybe 15, 20 years down the line, uh, we are going to have a situation where we will need to, uh, uh, by then, uh, have a, a workable solution to this. 